How can God use me? Who will listen to me? Can I really teach about Jesus after the mistakes I have made? These are just some of the questions a lot of us ask ourselves. Many of us believe and know the truthfulness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but can't fully embrace it, can't be the example we need to be, feel like certainly they will fall short or be seen as a hypocrite or a fake, or worse yet, feel as though they will be viewed as a fool for their beliefs. Living righteously is hard. It is difficult. Even with the promise of eternal happiness, it can be difficult because we aren't promised that everything will be great right now. The purpose of agency and free will would be defeated if everyone who did right was instantly rewarded. If every good deed was met with immediate celebration or glory, surely people would always choose right if that were the case. So we do good for many reasons. We live righteously for a lot of different causes. The spectrum can run from a very righteous desire to express our love to God. Some may just want to make it to heaven. Others to be an example to their children. Some because it is all they know. Others still may live the gospel because they have ran out of options and they see nowhere else to go and are down to their last effort to make sense of it all. Whatever the reasoning, no matter where on the spectrum you are, God loves you. God wants you. God has a purpose for you. You are his child. He sent his son to both live and die for you. That is the truth. And I would forever regret not expressing that I know it is true beyond any doubt. Now many of us will eventually or ultimately decide to stop holding back, to turn our will over to God and stop questioning and or trying to do everything our own way. And then we won't hesitate or worry about what someone will think or whether they will judge us because our concern will be doing what is right because it is right and that's just how it will be. But I'm going to read some powerful words that kind of give a description of the ride you're in for if you choose this path. Back in the day, I used to enjoy those choose your own adventure books. See if this description is something you're ready to venture forth into. Or for those already in this path, is this how it feels to you? 2 Corinthians 6, 1-10 states, We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Now, I'm not trying to tell anyone I'm there. I'm not even going to venture a guess as to where exactly I am on the spectrum. But I do know that from the experiences in my life where I chose the right things versus the times I have chosen the wrong things, it feels much better to do the right thing. Hope is much better than doubt. Working to be better is far more rewarding than just doing whatever. As I read through those words, I was hit with exactly how all-encompassing deciding to live our lives for God actually is. How it isn't all rainbows and unicorns, but that there are pitfalls and thorns along the way. But even at times when you will feel like, why me? And when it will appear to others that you have nothing, 
you will have everything because you will be where you need to be. And you will be storing up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Brothers and sisters, it is my prayer, my most heartfelt prayer, that we will all more fully commit to give our lives over to God, that we will all be able to follow the teachings of the Savior more completely, that we can be who we need to be for ourselves, for our families, for our friends, and for all that we cross paths with, that we may let our lights shine more brightly, so that we may glorify our God in heaven, and so that we may all receive true and everlasting happiness. And I share this message in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen.